Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is that? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook. Got you shook. Not Dead Yet. Season premiere tonight, 8 30, 7 30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson. It's so good to have you here. Uh, Kel and Lucy are two radio announcers at The Light FM in Melbourne. And I recently had a chat with them about all things dad and Father's Day in the lead up to Father's Day. And he joins us now, the wonderful, my icon of parenting and all things family. (laughs) He hates that. Dr. Justin Coulson. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where everyone is listening. How are you going, Justin? Lucy, it, it makes me feel nervous when you say that. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm feeling I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling apprehensive. I'm feeling worried. I just don't know if I can live up to it. <laughs> You're gonna have to. The other day, I was asked. They were said, "Who's your? Who do you look up to for parenting? Who's your icon?" And I was like, "You know what, Dr. Justin Coulson." I <laughs> said, "Just I agree with everything he says. Like I'm one of those people. I'm like, yes, that's exactly right." Oh, one you. thing we love about Justin though is, yes, he's got his TV shows. He's got his podcasts. He knows all things about parenting. Yeah. But you do. Let us know, Justin, that you are a mere mortal and sometimes parenting is tough, even for you. Yeah. Uh, six kids keep you humble and poor <laughs> and tired yeah. and tired. Well, you know, Kel and I, whilst we host a radio show together, we actually got married about a year ago and now together we have five children. So wow. I have four bonus kids. Kel has one bonus kid. So we understand what it's like having a massive, massive family. And that's what we wanted to chat about really this morning with Father's Day just around the corner. All things dads and how we can encourage our dads to be kind of the best dads they can be. I mean, we talk a lot in this space when it comes to women. We talk about mothering a lot, just generally in society. We don't really talk as much about men. And I think that's to our detriment. I've recently had an experience that might highlight what a whole lot of research has been telling us for a couple of decades now. Traditionally, researchers have mainly looked at mums. Mums are easier to access. Mums are more inclined to help scientists with their studies. Mum Mm -hmm. research just happens a lot more. But around about two decades ago, some researchers started to ask some hard questions about dads and their importance. And they found some incredible things, especially that kids need their dads so long as dad can be safe even if we're not in the relationship together if the relationship is split up kids need their dads and and i can talk about all of the different stats and all the different signs but sometimes real life is more helpful than that uh, just in the last week or so mrs happy families kylie has gone away she had 10 days away oh. um, she went to a conference and just had the best time while she was gone, which meant that I was at home with the kids. I was working full time. I was looking after the kids, doing all the extracurricular stuff, looking after the folding and the ironing and the washing and the dishes and the cooking. And uh, in other words, I was being a parent, right? (laughs) And I'm not looking for a medal. (laughs) Although if you have one for me, I'll take it. The, The thing that I wanted to highlight, though, is what I observed. And that is that life is better when dad is home and involved. Now, I know that that's not possible for every family, but we just do better when our family is together and we're working together. It was just wonderful. I travel a lot for work. I'm gone all the time at conferences and giving talks all, all over the country and even internationally. And to have that 10 days where I sat at home with the kids, worked my tail off, but I was there and I just thought, oh, this, it kind of feels like back in COVID when we all said we're going to be committed to slowing our lives down. We're going to work more together. And we kind of forgot as soon as the restrictions lifted and uh, it got chaotic. It just, it emphasized to me just how important dads are in their kids' lives. I know when I do my counseling, which I do very often, and during uh, a recent counseling session, I was talking with my counselor and we were talking about the fact of uh, relationships between the child and a father. And she said to me that a relationship between a, a dad and their children is reliant on 
what the dad is willing to do, how the dad is willing to open up, how the dad is willing to connect. I'd love to get your thoughts on that because I think sometimes dads don't know how to dad. Obviously, we learn as we go along. Sometimes we inherit some ideas from our own father. Uh, It's an interesting place to spend some time thinking about, especially if you are a father. The one word answer is involvement. Involvement, um, being present, participating in life with your kids. Um, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. Kel, how do you feel about board games? Like if someone says, hey, Dad, let's play Monopoly. Do you look at them and smile and say, oh, what a great idea. Can't wait for this. It depends on the board game. He, oh, look, I, I can pipe up. I, I'll find him on a weekend lying on the floor playing battleships with his kids. Battleship oh. is a big one. The thing for me with board games is let me do anything else. Get me out of the house. Let's go and be active. Let's <laughs> just board games. Stick flaming bamboo shoots under my fingernails before you make me play board games. I just can't stand it. Uh, but recently we had, uh, while Kylie was away, we had a, a, a game of Monopoly. The kids really wanted to play, so I ugh, sighed and I rolled my eyes and I did all the things that kids normally do when we ask them to do something that they don't want to do, dragged myself to the table, sat down, dished out the money, decided that I had to be the banker, and then we started to roll the dice. Yeah. Two and a half days of Monopoly. Once you start, there's just something delicious about participating in and being involved in your kids' lives. It was it was so much fun. Now, again, I can't stand board games, but I'm I'm almost getting weepy thinking about how beautiful it was to sit around the dining table for about six sessions, each lasting at least an hour, hour and a half, maybe even longer, o- across two and a half days as we battled through this game of Monopoly. And I just thought to myself, wow. I, I mean, I'm the parenting expert, right? I've written nine books about this stuff. But th- <laughs> this is what it's about. It's about laying on the trampoline and staring at the clouds or yeah. going for a bike ride around the nearby park or lake and, and dodging the magpies. It's about building the cubby house on the lounge room floor. Uh, it's about the, the snuggles and the cuddles in bed as you read mm. stories and yeah. introducing them to the world of Narnia or to the Princess Bride or to <laughs> whatever it is. Th- mm. Those things, are, it's, it's about involvement. It's about connection and yeah. the kids feeling seen, heard and valued by you. I, I can't think of anything more, more precious than that. Dr. Justin, while we still have you here, we've got Father's Day coming up this yep. weekend, big day for dads on Sunday. I think you would be ready to speak into how dads can make the day not just about them, but about their families, of course. It is dad's day. Maybe they get some burnt toast and some and soggy cereal in bed, yep. but it's a real opportunity, isn't it, to be the sort of dad you want to be? Yeah, and it requires intention. Set it up ahead of time. We've got time now to, to set the intention and let everybody know this this Father's Day, uh, whatever you've got planned, we want to make sure that we get to spend time together. Uh, mm-hmm. So long as you've got time. I'm, there's, there's this cheesy quote. It's been around the parenting world for at least four or five decades now. I have no idea how to attribute it, uh, but it goes like this. To a child, love is spelled, I'm going to get weepy. Oh, uh, to, <laughs> to a child, love is spelled T-I-M-E. Mm. To a child lover spilled tea on me. It's cheesy. It's corny. I can't believe that it's made my eyes go a little bit wet. <laughs> but when it comes to Father's Day, let's make sure that we allocate the T-I-M-E. Um, it's, it's just so beautiful to be able to spend that time together. Dr. Justin, I love, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I love parental guidance. I was a, a mad fan of that. And I think it is the voyeuristic part of being able to Great judge show. people's parenting from yep. the safety of your own house <laughs> yes. and, and scream at the TV. And then also learn. Uh, I did love it. But one thing I loved on all the series so far is you always come with stats. So it's not just like, I remember in season one, you weren't just like, don't smack your kids, it's bad. You were like, you had statistical evidence. You always have all this empirical statistical evidence that backs up everything. I love all the data you have. So when it comes to dads and and new findings and data, what have you got for us? What is the what is the science showing us? Okay, let's break this down. We can talk about how dads benefit the family. We'll talk about how dads benefit their children specifically. But I also want to talk about how dad being present benefits both mum and dad being present actually benefits him. So we'll go through mm. the four. Let's start with the family. Just just a couple of things uh, off the top of my head. Research shows that um, when dad is present, 
the family tends to have, th- th- there's a greater income, high levels of family income, reduced risk of poverty. And it gives the family the flexibility that they need because everyone's not stressed all the time. So you've got a little bit of margin. There's, there's less time pressure. So the family feels different. The family feels better when we've got a well-functioning, uh, happy, contributing father. The benefits to the kids, though, uh, have a listen to this. Uh, and I've got a list here. Reduced rates of prematurity and infant mortality. This is even before the baby's born. Less crying as newborns. Now, I know some people are saying, oh, my baby cried a lot, but we're, so, we're talking about on average. There are fewer academic challenges. Children have reduced risk-taking behavior. There's lower delinquency in adolescence. There are fewer behavioral challenges. There are fewer mental health challenges. There's increased physical activity levels, less substance use and abuse, better social functioning and fewer romantic relationship problems, reduced risk of early sexual experiences in teen pregnancy, and children with both parents present and a dad specifically involved in his kids lives those kids have increased earning potential as adults oh wow benefits to good list benefits to mum um mums have fewer health problems ability to offer higher quality parenting more time apparently for leisure activities although a lot of people are going to say no but imagine if dad wasn't there and Mm. typically we see increased mental and emotional well-being but for dad this is what i love greater engagement in service organizations, Mm. improved diet and physical activity, decreased risky behaviors, less alcohol use, and strengthened intergenerational family ties. Across the board, everybody benefits when fathers are involved in their kids' lives, even if they're not living in the same house. Yeah. It's big, isn't it? It is big. And and I know there's a lot of people out there in, in single parent homes and I know they sometimes find those father figures in other places, which is beautiful. Mm. Like uncles step up and, and grandfathers and friends can come around kids if, if the biological father isn't there for some other reason. Justin, it's been a pleasure to be able to catch up with you. Thank you so much for all of your time. You're a very busy individual and I know everybody is trying to get a little bit of wisdom out of you when it comes to being a parent, but... We, we have it on good authority. Yeah, we heard, uh, little Birdie tells us it's going to be a very special Father's Day oh, for you. Well, yeah. For the not too distant future. You have a very good source. Uh, my eldest daughter and her husband are expecting their first baby in about I don't know, two, maybe three weeks. So my I'm about to become a grandpa. What are you going to be called? Do you know what you're going to call yourself yet? Is it Poppy? Is it Gramps? Is it Grampy? I have no idea. No oh. idea at all. And I'm fine with any of it. So long as I get to nurse that little baby and cuddle it and tickle it and, and love it like crazy, uh, that's kind of all I care about. Do you know what will be very, I think, incredible for you to watch? We'll be watching your daughter parent that child <laughs> using so many of the things she's learned from you like how amazing will that be like that'll be full circle watching your parenting now affect your grandchild i suspect i'm going to bite my lip more than once but we'll see how we go (laughs) that was lucy and kel uh, breakfast announcers at the light fm in melbourne talking all things Father's Day. Our Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. For more info about making your family happier, as always, visit happyfamilies.com.au and check out our upcoming Father's Day webinar. Can't wait to tell you more about it. All the details are at happyfamilies.com.au. Listener.